Hello and welcome to another street photography video with me Nick Turpin. Um, in this video I'd like to address a little bit the question of uh, you know why why street photography? Why are we doing street photography at all? Um, and it's something which I always start my workshops with when I have a room of gathered students. The first question is you know why are you here? Why did you sign up to my class? Why aren't you down the hall doing landscape or next door doing portraiture? Um, what is it about street photography that has attracted you? Um, can you identify, you know, verbalise what is it that um, is special about it and, 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 you know, makes you want to, want to go out on the street with a camera and, and, uh, and make candid public photographs? You know, it's something which I think a lot of people just go out and do. Um, they see a lot of street photography online and they think, you know, I'd like to have a crack at that. Um, maybe because it's funny sometimes, maybe because it's beautiful or tragic or, or, or surreal or ambiguous, whatever it is. Um, you know, they're attracted to something. And I think it's quite important to know perhaps why uh, why that is, you know, for yourself. Now, I can't tell you uh, why you might want to take street photographs. Uh, I can only encourage you uh, to ask the question of yourself. But I think, I think it's really quite crucial before you start thinking about, you know, how to take street photographs technically and that sort of thing, uh, different strategies and approaches to use on the streets. Um, you know, there's a lot of workshops about that. Um, I've did workshops for years, really, just based on, on, on how to take street photographs. Um, but suddenly I think, uh, you know, we got to a point with street photography, particularly this kind of modern resurgence of interest in street photography, where we need to be uh, a bit more clever. We need to be, be uh, asking ourselves, challenging ourselves really, and our viewers a little bit more. Um, so uh, I thought it'd be good to do a little video that uh, perhaps explained my, my choices, my journey uh, in street photography and how I arrived at, uh, at my kind of why, you know, why I do it. Um, and it might give you kind of a, you know, maybe a, a footpath to, uh, to, you know, finding your own reasons, your own motivations for going out um, and perhaps taking street photographs, which uh, make yours stand out uh, from the crowd. So I thought I'd illustrate uh, to you how I came to answer my question, you know, why, why street photography? Why do I want to be a street photographer? Um, and this started for me uh, at the University of Westminster in my second year. Uh, I saw a book on American photography in the, uh, in the university library. And in this book, I found a picture, uh, just thumbing through, I found a picture taken in Paris in 1976 by uh, the American photographer Joel Meyerowitz. And this picture, um, this picture was uh, an amazing scene, a full busy scene, uh, full of cars and people and traffic. Um, and and I, I looked at this picture and I, it, basically it made me realise the power, the power of a single image, um, how much a single photograph could do. Up until this point at university I've been shooting stories, I've been shooting stories about kids with leukaemia, uh, mining towns in South Wales, a series of pictures which would tell a story. And, uh, and this, seeing this picture made me realise that actually you can tell a whole story in a single frame and I think that's what uh, inspired me and that's what I decided I really really wanted to do and I guess that was the turning point for me and that's kind of shaped the rest of my life really. Uh, so, so let's have a look at this picture by Joel Meyerowitz. This is a uh, fallen man um, taken in Paris in 1976. Joel was over in Europe for six months traveling and, and taking pictures and um, in this picture, I mean, the entry point to this picture, I think, is, is one of humour. You see this incredible clash between this working class guy in overalls with a flat cap and a, and a hammer, stepping over a smart guy who's um, lying, uh, sort of lying in the street on his back. Uh, he's wearing a suit and a tie. And there's this incredible clash of, sort of almost class kind of thing, working, you know, blue and white collar. Um, and, and clearly it looks like he's knocked him on the head with a hammer and he's stepping over him. I mean, when I first saw this picture, I smiled, I laughed inwardly. Um, and I thought, you know, what, what a great moment. Uh, but then very quickly I realised, actually, in this picture, you know, there are 14 people here who are not going to help this guy. This guy is clearly uh, in distress, some sort of medical condition or whatever, and they all look terrified because he's like them. They're, 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 not, um, they're not sure what to do. It's like... You know, they, they all got up in the morning, put their, their uh, suit and tie on, um, just like this guy, and now he's lying on the pavement. So um, suddenly I went from thinking this is a funny picture to actually, cranky. this is actually quite a tragic picture. Um, you know, look at all these people, um, you know, too, too terrified to actually go and assist this guy. 
And then just where the picture is, uh, is created, I, I thought was incredible. The sight lines were amazing, how everybody, uh, her whole picture focuses on this guy, even the people passing in the street on a bicycle turning around, um, you know, guy delivering boxes, he's looking, everybody's looking in this one direction. And then I noticed that Joel had tilted the frame. I don't know if this was deliberate or not, but the horizon is at a slight angle. And it gives you the impression that the whole earth has moved slightly. So there is this sort of ambiguity to the picture. We don't know what's happened, and I love that. I mean, when you see a, a scene in the street, you don't often know what's happened. Um, you know, you never know where a couple down a side street are having an argument or, or, you know, or about to kiss. You know, you never know what the full story is. And, and that, uh, you know, replicates the experience of living in a city perfectly, in my, in my opinion. So this sort of tilted horizon, you know, gave me this sort of strange impression as well. Um, and then, you know, if you look at all the lines, the chain is just grazing the, uh, the stomach of the guy on the ground, which is a nice detail. Um, there's all this traffic in the road. It looks like one of those Armageddon movies where everyone's leaving the city. It's almost like what's happened to this guy is part of a much wider city-wide occurrence, you know. And of course, these are all my interpretations. These are things which I'm bringing to the picture as a viewer. But it's because Joel has presented us with such an amazing, uh, you know, a, a tableau of images here um, that we're able to do all this. And, and how's he done this? You know, how's Joel done this? He's done this very, very simply with two tools. The frame that he put around the scene, what he chose to include and exclude, and of course the shutter button. You know, the shutter, the moment he chose perfectly. And I've, I've said a lot uh, that um, in a great street photographs, generally those two decisions are made really, really well. Um, and then of course, you know, just historically, you know, how many years have passed since 1976. Uh, look at the haircuts, look at the dresses the women are wearing, look at the cars, how cars have changed. Um, you know, just historically, this photograph has become a document over, over those passing decades. And, um, and just to highlight, you know, really quite how much has changed, like physically in the, um, <clears throat> in the public realm there, the neighbourhood, the steps, the entranceway, but also just culturally. If you have a look now at um, a Google Street uh, view image of that junction now, you can see the junction's been expanded. Um, and you can see this is where the, this is where the uh, fallen man would have been. Um, so lots of things have changed. Uh, you can see there are, there are Islamic women with headscarves pushing push chairs. There's people on mobile telephones. In the background on the zebra crossing, there's a Japanese party of tourists. You know, all these things have changed. Um, you know, immigration, ethnic minorities, um, global, international uh, transport and travel. You know, so all of these things are fascinating. Even those beautiful Art Nouveau railings that were, about, that were around the entranceway have disappeared. Um, so, so just the historical uh, document aspect of street photography is something which is incredibly important to me. Uh, now I started certainly uh, copying the work of photographers who I really admired. A uh, big influence on me in the beginning was uh, Joel, May Joel Mayerwitz and, uh, and also the magnum photographer Elliot Erwitt. Um, I spent a lot of time in art galleries shooting pictures that were inspired by his simple uh, humorous and, and witty uh, observations and I, I um, it was the intelligence of it that attracted me to it in a way that humor um, that's that's what really got me got me into it in the first place uh, spending all my weekends in the Tate gallery uh, with just a little Nikon FM2 a 50 millimeter lens <coughs> and uh, and a lot of uh, hope and patience it wasn't until later in my career that um, I began to realise that there was a great deal more potential with, with street photography and uh, I think partly having worked as a newspaper photographer for eight years I really um, gained a respect for the photographic image as a, do as a document and uh, I realised that actually the street photographs I was taking were very much akin to the work that photojournalists were taking around the world and a lot of the issues that I was seeing on the streets of London were actually very much connected to the things which were happening in third world countries so you know clothes bought in uh, sort of very cheap high street clothing chains uh, would be made by children in, uh, in uh, sweatshops in Bangladesh. So we live in this global world, this global community where everything is connected. Um, you know, we walk around in London with our iPhones and smart devices um, and those things are dismantled and uh, recycled in, in, uh, you know, in the Far East and so on. There's, there's a big connection between our modern contemporary lives in a big big city like London or New York and, um, and what happens elsewhere, the impact it has elsewhere on the world. So I was very aware of that uh, walking the streets of London suddenly. So a lot of my projects that I shoot now, um, I actually start with the issue, the thing that I want to photograph. So, 
you know, uh, I did a three-year project called On the Night Bus, which some of you will would have seen, and that uh, that came out of the fact that I just became aware of the fact that so many people were traveling huge distances and spending huge amounts of time on public transport, like 90 minutes a day or more, just getting to work and back. Uh, my, my partner was doing the same thing, and that's, that's what made me realize that uh, you know, work in a city involved uh, a huge uh, investment of time just, just in traveling. And, I, and then I realized that that was quite an interesting time. It's like, what, what are you doing in that time? It's kind of dead time. You leave work um, and you're in a huge anonymous city of nine million people or more, and you're on this bus and you're not expecting to uh, see anybody you know. So you're kind of not in acquaintance with anybody. And that state of being you know, unacquainted with anybody that you know, either at work or family or home, um, that was the place I was, I was photographing these people and capturing that, that, uh, that state. And then more, more recently, the project I've done, um, I started with this idea of advertising, and I've wanted to photograph advertising for quite some time. Couldn't find a clever way of doing it. So, um, you know, I like to bring my street photographer's approach to it. I want to stay in that documentary tradition, that candid way of working, um, but also have a slightly conceptual angle to the street photography that I'm doing. So I always come back to kind of 35 mil traditional street photography out on the streets, um, but that, that's always going to be the heart of what I do, the engine behind everything I do. But I'm looking at ways of um, exploring around that now and, and um, you know, pushing the boundaries a little bit. So, you know, both those two projects I just mentioned were shot on long lenses, um, which is, which is you know, not the traditional tool of the street photographer. And yet they're still very much candid public photographs. I also think the street photographers are working in that area, that sweet spot of what uh, the camera does best, the camera's best trick, which is freezing, you know, a moment of reality for us to hold and, and inspect and keep, you know, for a long time, forever. Um, and I think that, you know, there's a lot, lot of the pleasure that I derive from uh, historical documentary photographs is the fact that, you know, I know these things, I know these things happened. Um, and that for me is the power of them. And certainly a lot of the work that I do, I, I'm thinking about the future and uh, how these pictures are going to look in, in 50 or 100 years time. Uh, the fact that everybody's walking around with their, their head down, looking at a mobile phone, eating their lunch out of a plastic triangle, a sandwich in the street and those kind of things. Those, those things are all going to change. And, uh, you know, what we're doing now is making a record of all that. And that's, that really is quite central to my, you know, my why, why I'm a street photographer. And then I guess, you know, when you've been a photographer for a long time, um, you're always looking for new challenges. So, you know, I worked for a national newspaper for, for eight years and then, you know, I needed a new challenge. I wanted to do something new with photography. Um, you know, I think I, I got quite good at being a press photographer and I, and I wanted to challenge myself with other areas. Um, partly, I wanted to spend more time on the streets doing street photography and also I moved into advertising photography because it was a whole, just a whole new arena. Uh, shooting briefs for clients is something which which is quite different to being a, a press photographer. Um, and then, um, you know, I've, I've tried a lot of things. I've done fashion photography. I've shot, you know, riots in the streets. I've shot celebrities, um, you know, Cannes Film Festival, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, shot, shot fashion um, and these multi-million dollar advertising campaigns. Uh, still, you know, those things are challenging, but still the hardest thing I've ever tried to do is to walk down Oxford Street with a, with a small camera and a 50 millimeter lens, trying to make something out of nothing. And I think that, um, you know, that is fabulous when you can do that. There is something about, um, you know, teasing a picture out of an ordinary street scene, which is incredibly satisfying. And when you get a really great one of those images, uh, nothing can beat it. I think the technical simplicity of, of street photography is something which appeals to me as well, because it puts the emphasis on the intellectual side of it, the way that you interpret the world, what you bring to a scene mentally, um, your wit, your humour, your sense of surrealism, or your, your, the way you're attracted to beauty or colour or light. Um, <clears throat> you know, we're all different in those ways. We all, we're all attracted to different things. And when I teach, I'm always fascinated to see, you know, what other people see in the same, in the same streets that I'm working in with them. So, um, you know, we're working with a, a simple camera, a small standard lens or whatever and uh, you know we have nothing to hide behind it's not like working on an advertising shoot where you, you've got a whole crew of 20 people and a couple of Winnebago's parked in the street um, you've got no assistance no lighting no set no casting no models you know it, it really is the kind of most basic form of photography um, and for that reason it is it is the very hardest so before you just pick up your camera and head out on the street have a little think about you know why you're doing it uh, what is it that, that appeals to you about it and um, 
you know, it doesn't have to be something hugely political or cultural or, um, you know, intellectually significant. Um, it just needs to be uniquely yours, I think. Um, I had an interesting experience in Miami uh, in December teaching a workshop there. It was the first time I had taught a workshop, um, not, not just about strategies to use on the streets to make pictures, but really uh, finding your own voice, really, finding what's unique about you, what you can bring to your street photography, which is going to make your work stand out from other people's. And I interviewed some of the, the students about their, their cultural family backgrounds um, and also their working working lives. And um, you know, one of the guys uh, was a TV commercials director. And so, you know, we had a conversation and he went out and he started shooting in the street, framing in this sort of wide format, the way that he would frame up um, a scene for one of his commercial uh, videos. So. He came back at the end of the session with a really unique set of pictures which looked nothing like anybody else's and this was something which he'd been able to delve into his own life and bring and apply to his street photography and I think um, that kind of approach can really get your work uh, noticed, really make you stand out amongst sort of quite a noisy you know background really of, of, of you know street photography that's out there. Um, it makes your work less derivative and, and more unique. So. Um, you know, I'd encourage you when you're heading out the camera to sit on the train or however you however you travel, and uh, just have a little think about what um, you know what it is you can do that's um, that's going to be uniquely yours. So I hope that's given you a little bit of food for thought, um, and I hope it'll encourage you to not just think about how you do your street photography, um, but to, in a way, probably the more more important question, you know, why why you're doing street photography at all. So um, you know. Pose that question to yourself and come up, come up with the answer and I think it will, um, it will add a great deal of depth uh, and uniqueness to your own uh, picture making. Okay, so I hope that's useful. Uh, don't forget uh, that I am still looking at pictures on uh, hashtag street photo review, so tag your images on Instagram with that. Um, I noticed there's several hundred images up there and I will be reviewing three or four uh, at a time in coming videos, so uh, stick your pictures up for me to see. Okay. Thanks very much. Get your camera and get out there.